I never thought that that would ever happen to me. It affects all of us. I've been a victim of domestic violence. It affects everybody. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. This problem is far more pervasive than people generally. The top calls that officers get killed on are domestic violence calls. I just never thought he would do any of those things. It affects everybody. It affects all of us. Probably in an abusive situation. I never thought that that would have happened to me. It affects all of us. Everybody. never thought that that would ever happen to me. Like most people, I never thought domestic violence would affect me either. My name is Sam, and I am a survivor of domestic violence. In 2002, my sister Lisa was shot and killed by her husband. Shot and killed by her husband and their two-year-old daughter, my niece, witnessed the whole thing. My niece and I are both survivors of domestic violence. Our whole family is. My sister is not. My name is Sam. I'm an everyday, ordinary guy, probably a lot like you. And probably a lot like you, I never thought domestic violence would have an effect on my life. Well, it did. And now this everyday, ordinary guy's life is changed forever. So how common is this story, this problem of domestic violence? Well, I'm going to find out. And by the end of this, we will all know. How big of a problem do you think domestic violence is in the United States? Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I have no idea. I think it's an epidemic. A lot of women that are affected by it might not even totally be aware that they're affected by it. Seven out of ten people are affected to a major degree by domestic violence. I know that one out of three women will experience domestic violence over the course of their lives. I, I think it's probably even a bigger problem than we know. Probably a lot of it has to do with um, socioeconomic factors. It doesn't really matter social status or class. I think it just runs the gamut. I think maybe you hear about it more in some groups, but I think it probably happens evenly across the board. Have you or anyone you know been affected by domestic violence? Um, yes. yes. My cousin, who I was really close to growing up, she um, was in a really bad relationship. I've been through it. Yes. I remember um, one night I was actually hiding in my doghouse, waiting, you know, for him to go to sleep. He had a lot of control issues and kind of just snapped and basically um, beat me up in the back seat of our minivan. He raped her in front of the kids, uh, tried to take her eyes out. If I can't see the kids, well, then neither will you. So clearly this isn't a problem that affects only a few people. Several people I talked to mentioned domestic violence shelters and organizations. Maybe I can find some of the answers I'm looking for there. I heard about an organization called Dawn, the Domestic Abuse Women's Network, and went to their offices to meet with the organizational director, Lee Drexel, to ask her some questions and learn more about domestic violence. So we went out on the streets and just talked to people at random about domestic violence. And about one out of every three people had a personal story about domestic violence. Is that, is that pretty normal? Well, that's consistent, Sam, with the national statistics that have shown that one out of every three women will experience domestic violence at some time in their lifetime. Some of the stories that these women were sharing with me mm. right on the street were just unbelievable. This one woman was shot at by her husband and still stayed in the relationship. I mean, mine shot at me, held knives to me, had me, I mean, in, in, in situations you could not even believe. Another woman, as a child, watched her, her mother get beat up by uh, her father repeatedly. Yeah, our, our, mo our mother was affected by domestic violence. Are, are these stories pretty typical, things that you hear all the time? I'm afraid so. Do you have any stories that you could share with me? I, I could share some stories that I've heard, but uh, we could also uh, set up some interviews for you to talk to women who have been victims and uh, survived. I think that would be a, a great experience for you. So Lee made some calls and I was off to meet some survivors of domestic violence and hear their stories firsthand. To do an interview with Maria, and uh, she's a victim of domestic violence. We're gonna go meet up with Ken Tram and talk to him a bit about domestic violence in the media. So today we're uh, we're on a police ride along in uh, the city of Kent. Not only did I meet with survivors of domestic violence, I met with a variety of people that deal with the issue on a regular basis, in hopes of getting a better understanding of the issue from many different perspectives. You know, I don't fully understand why I didn't think it wouldn't happen to me, but I just kind of figured I was different that he wasn't gonna do those things to me. 
when it got to a point to where he didn't have control over me physically, emotionally, or mentally, then it was like, okay, well, well, that don't affect you, then I'm gonna go start messing with our child. People would never believe that this man drove me around Seattle with a gun. He got a bigger gun, and he got a, a nine millimeter. And I remember it was silver, and it was bigger. And I remember thinking, this man's gonna kill me. What scared me the most was seeing his eyes. It's almost like he became a, a different human. And it was like this rage, his anger, his, that's what scared me. Every woman you talk to knows a friend, a sister, uh, uh, somebody at their workplace or school. Everybody knows a victim. When I was growing up as a child, my mom and my dad, uh, my father was very abusive. Do my mother. Mm. Oh. Verbally, physically, everything. A lot of times I was in the scene trying to break it up as a little kid. And sometimes I was in the way, so I got slapped around a little bit. There were threats between my father and, and my and t towards my mother that mm. if she left, um, that she would be killed. I have been involved in a relationship in the past that was very similar to it. I could see the pattern. I could see um, what I was going through, that this was the same exact thing that my mother was going through. If you feel as if you're being abused, you're being abused. My husband exerted um, a lot of emotional abuse. He exerted financial abuse. Um, he would try to, uh, as most abusers do, um, separate me from any support group, uh, hence the move across country with my family. Can we just discuss a divorce and work out an agreement? And his response was, if you leave me, you'll never see your children again. So what do I do? What do I do? There was a, a pivotal uh, a point. There was uh, um, a threat of physical violence, and I knew that next time it would be worse. Am I going to be one of the people that you read about in the paper? I don't know. And for a good two to three years, every time I opened my front door, it crossed my mind. He could be there. Top calls that officers get killed on are domestic violence calls. Within 10 minutes of our ride along, we already called on a domestic violence call. She's telling us that he's not there. The kids said, yes, he is there said they just saw him a few minutes ago. But when we asked her if we could go inside uh, to make sure he's not there for her protections, because he's got a warrant for assault DV and order violation, she declined, he refused his last to go inside. So unless we see him without a search warrant, we can't go inside. So here's a, a perfect example of a victim who needed our help three weeks ago, but now her, uh, she doesn't want help from us. She called her out. Yeah. Against him. He was an alcoholic, or, or probably still is an alcoholic, and a prescription drug abuser. Um, and both of those things increased once he was unemployed and once there were some financial problems. Uh, my mom made a decision when I was about 11 that she was going to leave. We found out later that he had been breaking into our apartment when we weren't there and going through stuff or listening to messages on the machine or um, just seeing if there was any indicators of that relationship that was happening. And one night he, uh, it was pretty late and I, I, I remember this vividly. We were in my bedroom, which was in the back of the apartment and we heard keys in the door uh, in the front door and we knew that there was no one else that had keys and it was, you know, whether it was instinctual or force of habit, I mean, we knew it was him and she kind of crawled in bed with me um, to, to hide or to protect herself and he came in, came down the hall, dragged her out of my bed by her hair um, and down the hallway and he had her up against the wall and was strangling her. Those things that I saw and those images would never ever go away. 
We have about 8,000 cases in our office at any one time involving abused and neglected children. And domestic violence is a very common problem uh, and fact of life uh, for those kids who are in abusive uh, situations who are being neglected by their parents. Many times their mother is being abused. So uh, we see it day in and day out in our office and it just you know, added more fuel to the fire to motivate me to do whatever I could to help. When you're in a terror, you don't expect to be loved as it is. You don't expect to be loved as it is. And that was a big problem for me. As soon as I saw somebody wanted me, then it started out as psychological abuse. He would consistently call me names. Started out like that. But, but this happened gradually over time. And then, and then it ended up being physical. I rely on the special transportation. He wouldn't allow nobody on the property. And so, it made it very difficult to do anything. And then it progressed to slaps. And then it was more serious than that. And he hit me when I had my son in my arms. And I said, you can hit me, but you're not going to hit me in front of my son. And my son was the catalyst, I guess, to help me get out. I think probably one of the hardest things about losing someone close to you is just knowing that they're never going to be around to share all of the wonderful things about life with anymore. This beach was place that uh, Lisa and my mom and I used to come to when we, were, when we were kids. Seven years ago, I came here with Lisa and her daughter and, and that was the last day that I saw Lisa before she died. And I'll remember that day really clearly for the rest of my life.